A Florida attorney who fought against helmet laws for years recently died along with his girlfriend in a motorcycle crash. I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and attorney Ron Smith and his girlfriend Brenda Volpe were not wearing helmets during the crash that would cost them both their lives. They were both killed from blunt trauma to the head. Motorcycle safety researcher Eric Teo said of the accident, It's entirely possible that if they were wearing a helmet, they might have survived, but we can't say for sure. Helmets certainly would have improved their odds. Smith was a member of an advocacy group that lobbied against the state's mandatory helmet laws, and he frequently took on cases in which motorcyclists were in violation of the helmet requirement. An article in The Guardian says that Smith's friends remember him as someone who valued his independence, with one friend saying, quote, he thought everybody should have their own choice. Of course, this is a very unfortunate incident, and I'll do my best to be respectful of the parties involved, but the bigger questions that cases like this one beg are, is this a matter of personal prerogative or public safety? And to what extent is the government responsible for protecting its citizens from themselves? I think everybody's in too much shock to explain it. It is a new seatbelt ordinance. If the town council gets its way, seatbelts will be mandatory for everybody riding in the front seat of a car through Richland. I'll have to detour the town to get to Kalamazoo. If they pass a seatbelt ordinance, I don't use a seatbelt. I would wear my seatbelt. If I get caught, I get caught, I guess. Look, if an attorney wants the freedom to live his life as he so chooses, even if most of us would deem his choices to be reckless or careless or dangerous, then should he have the right to make those choices for himself? In the case of motorcycle helmets and protective gear, motorcyclists aren't necessarily endangering others in their choice to not protect themselves. Still, we can look to a similar issue like seatbelts. Wearing a seatbelt wasn't always mandatory in the United States, and an individual's choice not to buckle up doesn't necessarily endanger anyone else. It's not a perfect comparison. For instance, seatbelt laws differ from helmet laws in that seatbelt laws require parents to take certain precautions when they have children in the car. Children on motorcycles aren't really a problem. But if we stick with the analogy, we can look at seatbelt data to get an idea of how public policy, when enacted in the best interests of the people, can be effective in saving lives. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Transportation, 90.4% of Americans buckled up in 2021, and in 2020, 51% of Americans who were killed in accidents were not wearing seatbelts. We know that wearing seatbelts is the smart, safe thing to do, and we know that seatbelts save lives. But if someone chooses not to take the precautions that we all know they should, should that be their choice? I'm not the first one to pose this question, of course. Seatbelt laws have been regular targets off and on of the pro-freedom-to-do-what-I-want faction of our nation and government. Their constitutionality has been challenged, with opponents to the laws claiming them to be a violation of their rights to privacy. It's not about the seatbelt though, is it? And it's not about the helmet. It's the principle of the matter, the personal choice, the rejection of big government and big brother. It's the freedom to not have your personal choices fined and ticketed by a local government who just needs to make some money off of its already tax-paying citizens. But when you start talking about things like choice and personal freedom, well, that's tricky territory in our current political climate, isn't it? Now. I don't want to sway this story too far out into left field, so I'm not going to get into the thing that you think I'm about to get into, and I don't want to use anyone's death to shamelessly further any political agenda. That said, situations like this one tend to eliminate things within our governmental systems that would normally not be brought to light. If freedom of choice is applicable in some situations but not all, which ones are excluded from that principle and why? Furthermore, what obligation does our government have to protect us even if they're just protecting us from ourselves. While there may be an argument on one side to give people the choice to live their lives as they so choose, even if it's personally dangerous and personally reckless, a counterpoint to that could be that accidents, injuries, and deaths are costly. I'm talking actual money. Hospitals are expensive and public services are expensive in terms of both time and money. If accidents are preventable and costs can be avoided, shouldn't they be prevented and avoided as a matter of public policy? A lot of that money comes out of tax dollars. So theoretically, if they're not being spent on avoidable expenses, they can be reinvested elsewhere within the community. 
I know it sounds a bit crass to talk about money when we're talking about actual human lives, but we all know that in the eyes of the government, they see dollar signs before they see anything else. The monetary argument will almost always win over the ethical argument because that's the world we live in and that is society that we have built for ourselves. Anyway, I'm not trying to make an argument one way or another necessarily. You all can discuss amongst yourselves in the comments. And with that, that is it for me. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you got something out of this content and be sure to follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you.